Gents. What's happening? Hey. Gents, ladies, astrophotographers of all shapes, <laughs> sizes, <laughs> genders, all of that. Yeah, yep, we yep, made yep. it. We made it. I apologize. We're 10 minutes late. And uh, I'll, you can blame it all on me because I was kind of doing some other stuff, non Astro World related. But um, we're here. We're here. We made here. it. We made it. Uh, uh, I know, I know. Uh, Eric's got some stories. He he is the only one with any stories right now because we all pretty much don't have telescopes, and the one that does have a telescope wasn't even in state. So, 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 yeah. so. Um, how was New Mexico? New Mexico was awesome. New Mexico, um, it was mind blowing as mm. far as the skies. I haven't seen I skies imagine. like that since I was in the Navy. And that's when you're out in the middle of the Pacific or in the middle of an ocean and there's absolutely nothing around you. Um, so my wife took, you know, took my family and my two dogs to Southwestern New Mexico, um, where she stayed in a Airbnb and in a town called Membres. It's in the Membres Valley, just outside, just actually in the Gila National Forest area. Um, which is right next to the cosmic campground. Okay, so the Gila National Forest is one is the first actual national forest in the United States. The cosmic campground is the first um, IDAS designated dark side dark sky site of North America in North America at the time when it only designated I think about four or five. Um, the Cosmic Campground was the only one designated in North America. Um, so that was really, really cool um, to, to do that and to see that, to actually see the bands of the Milky Way, you know, with your naked eye. Yeah. It was pretty freaking cool. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Cool. And what, what's, the, was, what's the portal on that? Is that a two? At the, Cos at the Cosmic Campground, it's a portal one. Where I was with one. Portal 2. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't think I've ever I been in at, one. I, I, I've been in two skies. I've never been in one skies, but yeah, I'm telling yeah, you. It's a Portal 1. And there were really cool people out at the campground because um, it's um, basically you, you dry camp. Either you're tent camping or if you're bringing an RV, you're dry camping and yeah. you're running using a generator um, and all that stuff. Um, but they actually have spots um that uh you can actually set up your telescope they actually have you know unloading and loading pads where you can actually set up your telescope they have about seven of them oh nice um, they have seven different sites so it was really really nice and um 
Uh, and uh, got some really cool pics of um, the experience. Um, let me share a couple of these here if I can. Um, let me see. I, li I, li I like when Eric talks because it gives me time to have a couple drinks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Drink hey, up, listen, <laughs> it's, it, it's been a rough day, man. <laughs> it's been oh, a rough yeah, I'm day. sure. Um, so let me go here. I'm sorry. I, want to, I just want to set this up. Here's, where's New Mexico? Uh, then, uh, Jay, no audio. Yeah. There we go. There I you spent, go. I see. I saw you going. I spent my morning <laughs> uh, tearing out a garage door opener and replacing it in 110 degree heat. That's Ooh. awesome. Yeah. I want to be like Jason. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> now Jason hates telescope. us because we have normal normal weather. <laughs> well, yeah, we've been smoked out for the last three days. It looked clear, and then the smoke moved over this way again. So we we're, Sorry. we're dead in the water again. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if you guys saw the pictures that I put up of M51 and M101. I got first light on the 127, finally. Um, and let me tell you, Ron, I love you to death, <laughs> but man, that sense is dirty, yo. That's that's dirty sense, man. It was almost as bad as Eric's when we showed it a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> was, and that was well, bad. I, I, may, I may actually send this to Eric just so he can clean it. <laughs> but uh, make sure wow. it's it, was, it was it was i mean i mean I, I don't know if i even have i think i have it i don't know if eric's ready if eric's not ready i'll just show no, it yeah you keep going you can go ahead and show it you go ahead yeah, and show i'll it. show it i'll show it and the camera's awesome it's it does take a little bit a little longer for the image download because i guess the, the chip is uh, so huge um oh my hair's really messed up oh my god okay um, <laughs> I just got a close up. Um, but um, let me see if I can grab it real quick. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I need a hat. <laughs> let me see if I can find it real quick. I know I have it right here. Yeah, it's right here. Here we go. M31. Do I even have it? Yeah, so I do. I have it right here. And. Pubix call, share screen, share screen one. Okay, and there we go. Pix Insight. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's yep. uh, that's not even that's not even that's with a low stretch. I mean that's not even that doesn't even show it great. I mean, right let's see if I could there you go. Wow, look at all those dust modes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Holy it's like it's got cow. the measles. <laughs> so, I'm telling you. So at, that, that's so what they call a target rich environment. Yeah, yeah kidding. So what, I got the cure She's for COVID that on loving you. feeling. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, Holy you god. know, so, so what I thought was true was going to happen with the Hotec flattener. Um, you could see the vignetting in the corners yeah so the chip is bigger than my image window mm -hmm. so that's why i got that 48 millimeter not reducing flattener so that's gonna that's gonna help out quite a bit i think it's gonna open yeah. up that open up that hole quite a bit um if you want to see that's m51 and again that's only one five minute shot um that's through the 127? That's through the 127. Yeah. And let's see, M101 I also did. And that's mm. one 10 minute shot. My guiding wasn't perfect. Um, but you can see the, the dust modes again. And this is one 10 minute yeah. shot here. That's no stretch. So. So I'm gonna put on the new flattener. I'm probably gonna sell the Hotec, <laughs> you know, and that's it. But um, we shall see what we shall see. Yep. Is there a uh, uh, 
piece of safety glass between the actual sensor and the outside environment of that camera? You have to get behind the piece of glass to get to the sensor, or is it just um, the glass? No, there there is a cover on there. I didn't open it up yet to see where the um, where the dust actually is. Um, so the smaller ones, I'm hoping they're just on the faceplate the that I don't have to take yeah. take it off. I'm just gonna take a hand blower and. And um, if it's, I mean, if it's sealed, you know, it's probably just on the glass, the safety glass. It is. It's sealed with actually eight screws and a silicone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. What do you call it? The, uh, uh, one of those things that you throw in all your garbage cans. Yeah. A gasket? Well, you, no. Yeah. The, <laughs> you know, silicone, whatever. The, the O ring? Desiccants stuff. Yeah, oh, so it's got a, tablets. Yeah, it's got a desk. Okay. It's got a desk, desk and screw thing over there. So, so that's attached to the underneath this little glass shield. So it, it's pretty. It's pretty solid. I don't think anything could have gotten in there. Although I don't want to say that it's not, because I had that issue with the two ninety four, where I actually right. had to take that off and get under there with a hand blower, and. Um, yeah. And that took care of everything with the exception of one dust mode, but other than that, it was fine. Yeah, and for uh, people out there that are actually, you know, talking about, you know, we're talking about cleaning, you know, the uh, the elements on, on a camera, you know, not necessarily the sensor, but the glass in front of it. Same yeah. thing goes with anything that has to do with a, uh, a telescope, you know. If sure, you're, If you're cleaning sure. glass, you want to make sure that you're using, you know, something like this. Yep. You know, which is a, a, a good um, optical cleaning fluid, you know, and these. Yeah, pipe pans, absolutely. Yep. And you can get these. Don't don't go to don't go to some of the astro places. Go to B and H. I got I got three packs of these for I wanna say ten or twelve bucks. bucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was cheap. Bucks, yeah. You know, even cheap. Amazon sells packs of four of those too. So, yeah, I was gonna say I've got a four pack awesome. for like twenty bucks on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, still have yeah. one. And you can get the and Eclipse fluid from there as well. Yep. You, you know what? I, I love if you can get it. The the Wonder fluid. I don't know if you know the Wonder fluid. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's 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 really it's from batter, um, and you can get it, but you can't get it in the United States unless you buy something at like a dealer. You buy something from the UK. They won't sell it. It's not for sale in the U.S. I can't yeah. find it anywhere. Um, well, you, you it's, it's called Wonder it. Optic Fluid. You should import it and sell it through CCTS. Uh, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I just I just did a a whole um, for the Stony Brook University tonight and tomorrow night where uh, where presenting to today was the general public and tomorrow is a bunch of doctors were presenting for astrophotography um, and astronomy um, for two hours that's where I was right before this so I I woofed down a couple tacos and then I came on the show and that was it but um, yeah so that, that's what I've been up to okay yeah. oh, I'm you're sorry right? you're out I'm yeah, I'm having some um, technical difficulties, some unexpected technical difficulty. But I am going to share with you um, the images that I, some of the images that I take that I that I do have to share. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's let me share my screen here. Go back to Emix. Hey Eric, are you on advanced or just regular call? I'm sorry. Are you on the uh, beta or the regular call? Uh, I'm not sure. If, I think it's beta. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's beta. Yep, there you go. Okay, cool. Hey. So let's go here. And Astro, Astro Photography, Astro Picks. And this was all with my, a lot of this was with my 290, um, was with my 294 MC Pro. Um, I didn't, I wasn't able to take, you know, my Rasa. So I had to take um, my ZWO cameras and a bunch of um, camera lenses. So I basically, I primarily used the um, the uh, why aren't I hate when my computer does stuff like this? 
Uh, I got uh, multiple images of, of myself. Uh, it's feeding my ego pretty well there, Eric. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I sometimes I hate this computer. But let's see if I can refresh this. All right. Let me yeah, share all for kinds a of screens. <laughs> I'm getting Ooh. all kinds of screwy stuff. Man, I don't know what's going on. Right. I'm, 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 I don't I'm know. A little, I don't uh, know. I hate this sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> But um, but no, the, um, the 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 Gila that whole area in southwestern New Mexico, it's usually around a border two, um, with the exception of um, if you really go further west, heading um, towards the Cosmic Campground, it's a border one. Um, guess what? Okay. I mainly went after um, I did some Milky Way images, so I got a Milky Way image um, with my DSLR. I actually used my move shoot move um, rotator which uh, turned out really, really well. Um, I really like that. I used it with my 6D and um, 24 millimeter um, Samyang. And then yep. I uh, used uh, on the mm -hmm. AVX, I used um, the, uh, so I did bring the AVX because that's the only mount, I, my travel mount. And uh, used the 294 with the Rokinon um, 127. Mm -hmm. which is a great combination i mean for a tr to travel light it's um it's a great sh it's a great combination to use and um my computer is hey, just eric. being a total you know what yeah hey, eric i went and threw up your <laughs> facebook page so there's your milky way shot oh yeah thanks so you can see the milky way shot oh, there's yeah. one of them yeah. I did, two, I did two of them. Um, there was even a second one. If you go, if you have a chance to take a look at my second one. Um, I have that one. This is in Bortle Two Skies. And where we were staying at, um, the Airbnb, it's all run off of solar power. Nice. So there is a, so, so there's this whole solar array um, where I ended up getting, um, sharing that. And, uh, yeah, it's just my computer is just being a pain in the you know what. And, <laughs> yeah, so if you go, so yeah, so you can see here the solar arrays. That's what I use for my foreground. And um, this was just a great shot. I ended up getting this. I had to wake up at about, I don't know, three o'clock in the morning to get that vertical shot of, um, of yeah. the Milky Way. Yeah. And, uh, I actually use an app called, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, PhotoPills. Oh, yeah. And PhotoPills is, personally, it is, it was, you know, a great app for only $10. And you can plan out, it's really good for um, solar viewing, you know, for solar and lunar planning. But especially, you can also have a Milky Way um, where you can plan, um, you can plan your entire setup. Um, you can plan for where the galactic um, core is going to rise. And where we were, we were about at 6,800 feet elevation. So wow. I was able to get some, some shots that usually from here I can't get because I'm so low um, that I was able to get, you know, there. Um, but the overall, the whole thing just it just turned out really, really well. And unfortunately, like I said, my unfortunately my computer is just not acting very yeah, cooperative. It happens. It happens. Yeah, sure. Eric, if but you yeah, want to try I mean, to send him I mean, to Messenger, I can put him up from Messenger. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's definitely going to be uh, a lot uh, different. Uh, uh, it's sorry, uh, it's definitely going to be a lot different than uh, Cherry Springs. Cherry Springs, you just a little over thirty-two hundred uh, feet. Okay. And uh, yeah. but it's still a portal too, so I mean. Okay. Yeah. I remember yeah, when I was when I first went into <clears throat> Cherry Springs. The first time I went there, and I and I looked up in the sky. The first day, the first night I was there, it was just I had to I had to figure out where the hell I was because there was so many stars in the sky. There was there was no real plate solving kind of. When I went there the first time, the first time I went there was over over twenty years ago, and um, okay. you know there was no plates. I you had to know where everything. Well, I couldn't even find 
I couldn't even find like Hercules. I mean, you know, it's just like I couldn't find anything. And because there were yeah. so many stars, it took me like 15 minutes just to readjust my eyes to what I was seeing because the amount of stars that I was seeing was just so much more than what I was used to. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, let's try this again really quick. Let me share this and let me go to Lightroom. So maybe you can see this. I see row. Yep. So that's one of my shots that I worked on. This was um, two days worth. Um, I spent five days there. Um, and so just two days, I, so, so two nights I spent on row. And um, this was using the 294 MC Pro and the um, Rokinon 127 Mini, um, 127. So this is a great shot of, you know, of row that I was able to get. Yeah. And um, other one, here's the blue horse head. And I wish I would have spent that. I could have had a little more time with it. Mm. But overall, I don't think it turned out too bad. Mm -hmm. But, Damn, you know, that's, 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 nice. that's nice. Yeah. So this is a really dense star field, you know, to, to pull all this out, you know, and um, Man, look at those dark this is one, you know, this is challenging. It's really, it, it, you know, it's it's faint, so it's kind of challenging, but I do mm -hmm. love, I love dark nebula, and I love bright mm -hmm. nebula, and I love dark dusty clouds. It's one of my favorite areas, you know, types of um, photographs to get. So that's why I like these two, like Row and, and um, the Blue Horse Head. Yeah. They are. They are my. Those are some of my favorites. These are probably Rose, my fa absolute favorite summer target because I just love all the color, and it's yeah. got so much in it. I mean, you got Antares, you've got M4, yep. Um, you've got just so much going on here, and um, the blue horse. It's it's faint, so it's a challenge, and I usually can't get these at my house, but um, yeah, it turned out. But these these turned out really well. And then yeah, um, very nice. I think uh, one other one that I got, I don't know if I imported it here. Let me see if I imported it into Lightroom. Was import. Yeah, George, your um, yeah, you your question about yeah, your your, your question about uh, Bortle rating. Uh, if you just go to uh, Clear Outside, like uh, oh, somebody actually put that up already. I just had to scroll down. That was that was me. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> yeah, Clear Outside will tell, will help you. There's another uh, really good app for uh, dark. I think it's called Dark Sky. Yeah. Hold on. I think it's Dark Skies. Uh, so, so this is the one yeah, I'm currently dark working on. Yeah, Dark Sky. I don't know if you guys can see this one yet. And uh, yep. this one was actually with a with a tw was was also with a two ninety four with a twenty four millimeter Samyang. And cool. oh, yeah. again, so and there's Row and the Blue Horse Head right there. This yep. one I tried my best. You know, it's, you know, it's really difficult sometimes to get these things into focus, especially when you're using these wide field lenses, DSLR lenses yeah. on these DWO cameras, it can be a challenge. So you can see where it's, you know, not perfectly in focus for everything. But that's the other one that I was working on was trying to get this one. Wasn't happy with it, but you know, it is what it is. Well, and some uh, of that's chromatic yeah. aberration as well. Yeah, a lot of it is, yes. Yeah. yeah. Especially around here, around your edges coma. here. <clears throat> yeah, yep, you got a lot of coma. Yeah, but you can take care of that in Photoshop. In, in, even yeah, in Lightroom. So work on, even in Lightroom, you can help with that. Yeah, so yep. I'm going to work on that. And I think it will, overall, it won't turn out too bad once I, you know, figure everything out now and once I get done with it. I think it won't be yeah, so bad. Yeah, it's going to look good. It's going to look real good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I basically, you know, was aiming at, um, aiming south, you know, at those southern targets that I normally don't usually get. So... It was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I hope to be able to have a chance to do it again, you know, at some point. But um, 
we'll Cherry see. Springs, man. Next time, Cherry Springs. Yeah, you know, we're talking mm-hmm. about Cherry Springs. You know, I would love to have a chance. There's a one spot in Tennessee. Um, there's a state park called, um, I think it's um, Great Falls State Park. Okay. Falls, Great Falls State Park, where it has a nice waterfall. Um, yep. And it's also a portal, too. So okay. there's a few other spots we're going to be hunting around. Um, New Mexico, yeah, yeah. if you guys ever have a chance, I mean, Jason, you're right there, so you know what I'm talking about. But if anybody else has a chance to, you know, take a trip um, to New Mexico for ash for astronomy and for astrophotography, it's I think it's well worth it. I think it was well yeah. worth it. And so yep. that was the trip. Um, had some. Um, we also even, you know, where we were staying, um, it's right next to Silver City. Which was um, okay. home of one of the homes of Billy the Kid. Billy the yep. Kid lived in Silver City. Yep. So we did some. So we did some, did some history. We even we went to um. We were driving to um, driving cro- cross country. We actually drove past Dodge. Drove through Dodge City. You know, okay. for Wyatt Earp. And, you know, yep. and Doc Holliday. It was pretty cool. Sure. And uh, sure. on the way home. In the way home, I'm your we stopped and we actually yeah, I'm your Huckleberry. We actually yeah. stopped in Kearney. <laughs> Kearney, Missouri. And Kearney, Missouri is where uh, the Jesse James farm, yep. family farm Kearney, is. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, Kearney, Missouri. So, yep. yeah, Kearney, Missouri. Got so shot in the good. back, man. Yeah, so we did, so we did a little <laughs> bit of history and stuff like that. Um, but there are a lot of really cool spots. There was um, a couple spots. Um, there is um, the City of Rocks, which is really beautiful. And it's a great... Um, it's this, it's this huge state park, not huge, but it's a really, it's a good sized state park where it has nothing but rock formations, volcanic rock formations from when the mountains were formed. So wow. it's pretty cool. Nice. But nice. that's, so that was one adventure. And right now I'm working on the second adventure, um, yeah. which is wow. the pier. <laughs> yeah. Which is the speaking, pier. Speaking of the pier, did, uh, did I see that correctly? Did, did you change your mind on the J-Bolts? Yeah, uh, I did change my mind on the J-Bolts. Um, I was talking to the Mason who was helping me out. And um, these guys, I'm going to give them a plug right now. If you can't see this, whoever lives in Illinois, um, Image Bro. 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 So, yeah. I mean, this guy, Rob, he came out and... Um, Took out his own time, you know, out of his own time. He, he saw an astronomer needing some help, and um, he redid and helped me out and redid everything for me. Um, so I uh, and he did it out of the kindness of his own heart. You know, we 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 spent you know from three thirty until you know when we went up before we went on the air working on cool. this. So um, I think I've got some pictures here. Uh, so I'm curious, sure. what's the what's the plan as far as anchoring your pier? How are you going to anchor it? Um, I have concrete anchors. I have five inch concrete anchors that I was that I'm going to use. So you're going to sink these deep into the concrete. You're going to drill the concrete out and put the concrete. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. And we'll see. If we're going to give it a shot. We're going to see how this works. All right. And um, see how it all works out. So uh, it's um, it's probably you know a lot of people are probably like uh, not the probably the best thing to do, but you know we're gonna give it a go. <laughs> yeah, yep. I'm sure it'll be fine. And I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll all turn out just fine. And I'll okay. um, glue them in there too. So well, oh, there are the gentleman there are you. Is he large. in the hobby? Yeah, he's no. Um, he just enjoys. He he he's not a he's not an astronomer, but he's a, you know a kid, he saw me with all the stuff you know. He he saw me with you know working on this stuff and I, we were discussing things and you know the plan and he said you know what nobody else you know if you bring out and try to bring another company out to do this then ne- nobody's ever going to do this for you. So yeah. I have the experience. I'm gonna you know why don't we spend some time and I'm gonna help you out here. That's so nice. Really nice. That's nice. Yeah. It was really, really nice. So he did not have to do that. No, no. Hey, you know what? It's it's nice when you got like like we were talking offline. It's it's nice when you're able to make contacts like that, and sometimes things just work out. 
I, I know that you had like a little bit of a, 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 a problem, uh, let's just say. And um, oh yeah, nice and, understatement. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you know, when, when you're dealing with a massive construction like that, and you really haven't done it before. It, it really, you know, you really got to use your resources and figure it out. Like, uh, I mean, when I was building my pier, I, I spoke to Simon. I spoke to all you guys. I spoke to um, Stacy Downton, who had, like, that concrete pier. Um, I, I spoke to a couple other friends who have piers on Long Island. I put videos of where to place it in my house, you know. You know? Yep. So, I mean, you got to kind of, you got to do your due diligence of, of, of that stuff. And, and sometimes things, you know, trust me, if I, I would do it all over again, I probably would have made the, the, the pad that it sits on a little lower because it's a little high now. I, you know, I got a big mm -hmm. 127 telescope and I got to lift this thing up onto the mount. And um, <laughs> so it's not that high. It's not super high, but I mean, it's it's high enough where, uh, you know, if, if this thing wasn't 20 pounds, which is what it is, if it was 30, 40 pounds, I'd have a little bit of a problem getting this on the south. And, um, you know, I would probably cut it down maybe six inches because it is an 18 inch high pad. Because yeah. I wanted it, high, I wanted it high enough because I got these cruddy forsythia bushes that creep over the mm -hmm. fence line. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, because they like, they get so much, uh, pollen and everything and stuff like that. So, uh, I just wanted it as far away from it as it could. And, um, and so we just built it up. We built the, we did it exactly how you did. You know, we got the sonnet tube, mm -hmm. we got the rebar, we got all the stuff, we got the concrete, belled out the bottom, almost lost a friend in the making of it, and, uh, you know, and, and we just made it out. And we threw, we threw the, 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 the sonnet tube in there, filled it up, put more concrete on there, put the rebar in there, filled up some more concrete, started building the pad with the wood and added more concrete. The J bolts <laughs> go in and more concrete, you know. So, so yeah. I mean, it, it's 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 a lot to do. And then if I didn't have my, just like you had, you know, you had a friend in in, uh, in the Mason business. I had a, a contracting friend come down and help me with it because there's no way, there's no way. I don't. Right. I am I am a building idiot. I can't do any of that stuff. I I, I can't. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, and then <laughs> I'll, I'll even show you the what happened. Okay, because I had absolutely. Oh, you're gonna show. You got. No you got clue. Guts. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> this is a 12-inch diameter sonnet tube, yep. and and these were the only ones that I could actually find in my area. And it turned out that yes. it didn't fit. Yeah. And this is an this is a, an Ioptron um, permanent pier, and now, so the spacing is the bolt spacing on that that pier is that uh, ten inch ten inch spacing from center to center on the I, on the bolts. I think it is. I think corner it is. Corner to corner. Ten, yeah, ten corner to corner. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, and I was using quick setting concrete, the type of concrete okay. you use um, to set post in. And it took, and it's the type of concrete that it'll it'll start setting in about 15 minutes. Yeah. So here I am. I'm working my tail off on Tuesday to get this in here. And as I'm filling it in, I'm not, you know, I'm not thinking about those um, about the J bolts. I'm trying to get this in, and. Uh, you know, when I, then when I tried to put the J bolts in, I couldn't get them in because concrete yeah. was already setting. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, so that, that's, that, that's this... another reason. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> no, that, that, that's another reason why I kind of let that, that post come up a little bit and build that pad around that post because now it's belled down mm -hmm. on both sides so i let i you know i i, I dug a little bit deeper actually I, mm -hmm. I didn't do any of the digging but you know some, someone dug a little bit deeper and mm -hmm. and made the made the square so that the sono tube and the and the pad are on top of each other and it's belled out at the bottom right 
So then once and once the the square is done. How, how deep did you go? How, with the, the sato tube? Yeah, how deep yeah. did you go? Yeah, well well the frost line's three feet. I went four. Yeah, okay. So I went four feet. Um, almost as tall as my little my little Spanish friend that we almost lost, and uh, and uh, yeah, I, I had to. Oh man! Oh man! My headset just died. Oh. I'll be back. Plug it in. You gotta get. You gotta get earphones. You can't hear me. So <laughs> okay. So so yeah. So I put the top. So the last. So mm, I yeah, had the crew. Works. They were doing this work and. Um, they actually put the sauna tube in. It went down 36 inches, 36, yeah, yeah 36, 38 inches, something like that. Um, yeah. And then I was basically to do all of the rest. And a lot of this, Dan, you're absolutely right, guys. You had, a lot of you guys were telling me, you know, and a lot of this is learning from your mistakes. Um, Ooh, that works. There's been a lot more planning, a lot more planning into this. And, oh, um, but is this wasn't gonna work <laughs> no. so no. um so if i go to what we've got now that there we go is what it looks like now yeah um yeah, much better it looks a lot better um because we basically we were rob is the guy who's helping me out. <laughs> he brought he brought in a concrete saw, and he took it down about because um, it was about six inches above the um, the pad that was left over, yep. and he took it down about three inches enough to, you know to show some more rebar, and cleared it all out for me, and he built this out of two by twelves. <laughs> This yep. box, uh, 24, I think it's about, it's either 24 or 30 inches. I think it's 30 inches. Um, that he built the form out of. And we just, you know, started filling it in. Yeah, th that's almost exactly what I did, except mine's only 18 inches. Yeah. And we just kept going at it. And now this is what it is. And Much I better. have... Um, it looks a lot cleaner, a lot better, and I've got, if you show you here, uh, bolts. I don't know if you guys can see this, if I can zoom in. Bolts, they kind of look like this. Yep. You know, these are three-eighth inch yep. bolts. They're about, these are um, five inches, and I'm just going to basically drill, you know, a hole, drill holes through these guys, and... Um, one thing that really surprised me about Ioptron in this pier is why in the world would they use three inch, three eighth inch holes, pier hole, you huh. know, mounting holes. These are three eighth inch. I would have expected these to be at least half. Yeah. Yep. And then just throw a washer on it and not. Yeah. And I was, I was shocked. To when I learned that these are only three eighth inch, well, so you know that's not, one of the things. Not not to, but if if you're gonna use if you're gonna use concrete anchors, right? You, obviously, at this point, you're not using J bolts. So no. Um, if you're if you're gonna use the concrete anchors, you want to make doubly sure that you you know if three eighths is the biggest that you can get, you know, on those holes, and that's yeah. what you use. Yeah. But the, yeah. the kind of anchors that I'm talking about, they, they look like molly bolts on steroids, okay? They're, yep. they're huge um, friction, you know, um, uh, impact kind, kind of bolts, right? So you drill, you have to get a, a masonry drill bit and drill down in, mm -hmm. get them as long as you can, you know? I mean, if, you're, okay. if you've got 12 inches of concrete there, you know, drill down yeah. in at least a good six to eight inches, and get those mm -hmm. long bolts, right? And they it has those compression um, uh, fittings. And all you do is you hammer those bad boys down in there, and then use a socket mm -hmm. wrench to to pull them up tight. And then um, you what the other the other thing that you can do is they they sell a specific kind of adhesive that you you literally squeeze down into that hole and you pound those those things down in there. And it's, so it's a combination of the adhesive and the mechanical 
wedging against the concrete when you when you tighten them when you tighten them up and they pull up tight mm -hmm. right and then okay. you just let it let it cure right set your set yep. your pier over it make sure that it's 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 square before it starts yep. to cure right make doubly sure and and then just let it cure let it cure overnight yep. and then come back in and tighten it up okay but um, yeah those i i use those before Whenever you get a chance, shoot me a message with um, those type of anchor bolts. If you can find, if you yeah, can find sure. or help me out with those, yeah, you can get them and at Lowe's. I'll you can get, get them. At, yeah, yeah, you can get them at Lowe's. I'll order them off of Home Depot or some. Yeah, yeah, and then I'll get them. You know, and if I can get you know eight inch, I'll get eight inch. Yep. You know, I want to make sure yep. this thing is as secure as possible. <clears throat> yeah, and and the, you want to make doubly sure that you get the hot dip galvanized. You know. Uh, you want okay. a heavy coating, a hot dip galvanized. I doubt you're going to get, you might find them in stainless steel. If you can find them in stainless steel, buy them that way. You know, mm -hmm. I doubt you're going to get them in stainless steel. You're not going to find them Look at the for them and see. like that. You'd have to find them at a specialty screw. Yeah, they'd ha you'd have to, he's Nothing right. Bolt. You'd have to go to a specialty store for that. But stainless steel would be ultimately the way to go. But on the hot chat dip galvanized saying, is fine. A lot of guys in the chat are saying to make sure you use a good epoxy. Hilti makes a really yep. good one that Mark recommended. Yep. Um, that seed, he's used. Yep. Yeah, the, exactly the epoxy right. stuff is nice because it's a thermal cure, um, yep. so it'll use okay. the compression, but that thermal bonding will actually adhere to the concrete really well, and it'll keep okay. it from moving. Okay, so I'll get the epoxy. Yep. Because now that, it's you know, next. I've got this done, I'm now it's all about, you know, making sure I secure this pier, you know, mm -hmm. as well as possible, you know, to make sure that, you know, this thing stays, you know, well as well as it stays and not shift. Yeah, ever or at least for years. <laughs> that yeah, I'm, at least for years, you know. See, I, so, I wasn't even worried about that. I'm hoping I'm moving is... in the next in the next couple of years. So, so I'm not worried about. <laughs> all it's got to do is last me till you know, maybe 2023, and then I'll just take mm -hmm. it off. Maybe I'll sell the house with it. I don't know. If somebody's an astronomer. <laughs> yeah, you never know. But yeah, so but, but this is phase one. Problem. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> So this is yeah. So this is basically phase one of the uh, journey for the observatory. This phase so like four to get this, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so eventually, um, then I'll build something. Or you know, I'll tap down all of the um, the pad itself, tamp it all down um, with a compactor, and then um, we'll start building stuff around it. You know, decking around it, and then I'll get the. I'm looking at a sky shed pod. So I've been still keeping my eye on the sky shed pot. So we'll eventually go that route. Did you did you did you guys see what happened with um with uh Mitch? Alan Mitchell? No. no. Freak rainstorm in Texas rained all over his observatory. Oh, yeah. <sighs> oh no. Shorted yeah, it was open, he was sleeping, he shorted open? out his uh, his mount. Uh He's yeah, got burn, burn spots on all the power control boards. Um, oh no! Yeah. Oh, so I'm like, I told, I told Jen, I was like, Jen, you gotta see this. I said, could you imagine if this? Ha I don't even have a. I don't have. I don't. Mine's open to the elements. I don't have anything covering anything. So if a freak storm comes on, I'm screwed. So, <laughs> so, so I was like, listen, I'm like this close to buying like the the Boltwood two, like weather sensor that like puts like blaring sirens in your house and everything and you know <laughs> <laughs> craziness because i was like listen you know it's like it's like i want to say that for the best one it's like almost 1800 bucks for this thing it's wind cloud rain snow temperature humidity everything but you really all you really need is a barometric pressure gauge that has an alarm set to it because really the barometer is really going to determine whether or not it's going to rain whether it's going to rain that's right when it falls so, I mean, really fast you know it's going to rain yeah, so I mean, I would look at trying to find a barometric pressure gauge with an alarm, which would be mm -hmm. uh, equally as efficient. Well, where would that? Where would that, that? What you put that on your roof, just like anything else? Or? Anywhere outside. Yeah. Um, Anywhere. I mean, yeah. Just as long as it's monitoring the outside ambient. Um, yeah, I'll, because, I'll look at that. It's a lot better than eighteen hundred bucks. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Th they can't be that expensive. But the biggest thing is finding the alarm part of it. Um, you know, most weather stations have a barometric pressure reading, but they right. don't necessarily take and have an alarm set to it. Um, so I'd probably start looking at some place like, uh, uh, what is it, Lacrosse, that does okay. a lot of weather stations. Um, okay. 
you probably have to be out of their consumer tier into the mid-level, you know, like amateur astronomer or uh, weather guy type. But I mean, that it's got to be out there, and that's yeah, more yeah. what's going to be a better indicator of hey, I got a problem coming. As soon as that barometer starts making a major adjustment south, you know it's going to be there yeah. quick. I I remember something because I, I need something. I, God forbid if I get a freak storm and it's just like. I remember just seeing on something a while ago. I remember seeing something a while ago that was a it was a um, a rain sensor. It was a, a pad or something like that that was it, it it had the ability to connect to your 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 wireless you know. So you, you just basically put this pad out there. It starts you know it, it, the minute it gets wet, it sends an alert to your phone or yeah, to wherever. I, I, I need I need yeah. some I need a little wet, it's too warning. Late. Yeah, it's too late. I need I need something that gives me a little a little warning on that. Like, you know, I got I gotta have five, ten minutes to, you know, throw on some shorts and you know, shoes and run outside and bring it inside or at the very least. Can I tell you right now running, you're trying to protect twenty thousand dollars in a year. Yeah, it's it's uh, don't worry, no, I, 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 wet, I, I, I'm running out in my boxers, okay? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I can you guarantee do you. Do, I don't care you about you. Do roll it inside. Like That's all you do. You're just gonna roll it inside the garage. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, but um, you know, you know, I, I definitely need a little heads up on that. I try, I tried this thing called rain alarm, and that thing stinks. It's horrible. Yeah. No, because and, by time it, it, you know, it's looking at rain gauges. By time it measures a rain gauge. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, like there's yeah, rain it's in dark. your area. It's yeah, too late. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it tries and tells you. It says, like, oh, it's like 10 minutes away. Yeah, right. No, it's 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 here. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Jason's right. The, the barometric pressure gizmo is probably your better bet. So, Accurate right. Right. Well, does that, make a look weather into. station. What's that? The Accurate, A-C-U-R-I-T-E, does make a weather station that does have programmable alarms, and one of them is oncoming storm triggered by barometric pressure. There you go. That's it. That's what I need. And how much is that? That's the one. Uh, they didn't list a price on this. Of course. It's, it's probably like two grand. <laughs> yeah, when they don't tell you what it costs, <laughs> it's a lot. Check, 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 check for this price. is one of their consumer ones. Um, let me see if I can get it to pull up. But... <clears throat> hey, Nathan. Come here for a second, baby. But yeah, so so you know that's one of the things I'm like having nightmares about, you know, especially since I just Upstairs redid my whole rig and water cup. bought a whole bunch of new stuff. In there and some, uh, and you know, now that I'm going to be doing some water, bring it down. I mean, now that I'm going to be doing uh, RGB and luminance at the Thank same you. time. Yeah. And with the incoming EQ8R, uh, last thing I want to do is have it rained on or snowed on in the middle of you know Thanksgiving. You know, so. How much was that eight, that eight R? I'm curious. I, I cannot say. <laughs> oh, it's a secret. I see. It's a secret. Okay. Um, I, mm. I will tell you this uh, for those of you that are now shopping for Skywatcher stuff, don't be surprised. I know we spoke about it. I think last week. And if if you wonder why I'm sitting like this, my headphones died, and now I got this wire here. So, so that's why I'm sitting like this. Um, <laughs> but uh, prices are going up amongst all um, telescope dealers, meaning Celestron. And now um, Celestron is saying that if you purchase something like months ago, they can't guarantee the price that you originally bought it at. They may charge you the newer price. Yes. That's so don't be surprised. That is. I agree. I agree. But they're saying they cannot guarantee, they, they won't guarantee the older price that you actually, the date of purchase. That's that's some serious BS. Yeah, that's the only company that's saying that. But uh, but um, <laughs> that's pretty scary. That's pretty scary. Yeah, that would frost my Fruit Loops, that's guaranteed. Eric, I, I think you're muted. I'm not sure. Yeah, I can't hear you. Eric. I can't hear you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that would. Oh, there you go. You're back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. That's all right. That, yeah, that I, would. That you didn't would want anybody hear what he was saying, so. No, no. Yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, I was. I was dropping them all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, he's pulling a Jason. If, what's that? He was pulling a Jason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason <immediately. laughs> but, uh, 
But yeah, so a lot, a lot of companies are raising their prices because of, of course, the China tariffs. Um, so now what they're doing is they're raising the cost, um, not, not to the dealers. They're not punishing the dealers, but they're passing it on to the consumers now. So um, some things are going up higher. Ticket items are going higher. Some of the lower ticket items are going up less. Uh, but um, I mean, perfect example. I think the eighty is three now. Um, originally sixteen forty nine when I bought it. Um, I think it's eighteen ninety nine now. Um, so yeah. So it's, yeah. Wow. It's a but, great time um, to look at European manufacturers. They're having their tariffs listed at lifted as of the G seven meeting. The tariffs are Asian on Asian goods remain and will likely worsen. Hint, hint, Prima Luce Lab. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Yeah, no, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so, and that, that also includes uh, Aunt Leah, Avalon, amongst others. Um, I'm sure ZWO is getting ready for a spike as well. I know they 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 dropped yeah. the price on the ASIR Pro. Yeah, they did. So I mean, which is shocking 30 to me, bucks. But... Well, not really. Uh, it's been about a year that it's been out, so we're looking. I, I this is pure speculation. There's no fact behind my next statement, but I'm speculating that there's going to be a, either a major upgrade to the Wi-Fi circuitry, or to the whole board uh, to the new Raspberry Pi. So I'm willing to bet that there's going to be a Pro Two coming in the near future. Um, okay. So they're looking to liquidate what they have in the pipeline. I so got you. That, that, that makes sense. Then that makes sense. That, that's I mean, because hey, when, when V1, V1, because V1 was out for what, just about a year? Mm -hmm. Maybe yep. a little over? A little over. But about yeah, a year about 18, until uh, the Pro came? 18 months. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then the Pro came. So, yeah, it's not surprising that, you know, to start lowering the price now to prep for, you know, something coming new down, you know, ASIA or Pro 2, you know. Just so, assuming yeah. and speculating, you know. It, yeah, no, yeah, I, I have no idea. But, their biggest know, Achilles heel has really fun. been their wireless, um, yep. and oh, people yeah. found a hack for that. Um, yeah, the, and there's that guy that was doing it, it on, uh, yeah, it's on YouTube, uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah, guy, the guy tore, tore the chassis apart and, <laughs> and put a big antenna on it. <laughs> well, and I mean, it makes sense. The, the it functionality does, it does. is within and the board, good. and they didn't but disable know what it. You're doing. But, yeah, yeah. It, it definitely voids your warranty. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, oh, yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not getting that back. But, uh, you know, for the, it is definitely not for, but for the cost like, that you – I mean, but for the cost of an ASIR Pro, then who cares? It, yeah, if you break it, you break know, it. 300 bucks. They're now 270 so they dropped yeah, it 30 kinda, bucks. Kind of like yeah. my new full HD webcam that I, you know, <laughs> that I bought, you know, nope, I, don't, I don't care if this gets broken. <laughs> you know, right. I'm not, I, you know, but. Uh, so, so circle back is. to our earlier question about the yeah. weather stations. I yeah. sent you a direct link in Facebook, but. Oh, you Basically, did? the different sensors and stuff like that, they do have starting at about 60 bucks and go up to about 300 um, that's, that's... They, they list 26 different stations that have the alarms. And of those, I would say there's probably about 10 that have the barometric pressure alarm. Um, okay. So you can further dial that in, but I sent you a link. You can find it on your own. Yeah, I got, I got it right here. But, awesome. um, Copy me on that link or send one to me as well. I might be interested okay. in that. But um, it, yeah, I've just used it the a great product before, and it's reliable. Um, you know, I have it in my backyard. Just it's not in an ideal location, right? But it works, and it gives me a rough notification. I have mine set up with a lightning detector, so that if I start getting a, a monsoon, it sends off an alarm to let me know that within 50 miles there's lightning, so that I can grab my mm -hmm. gear and book out and try to catch the storm. Oh yeah, I forgot you're a little you're, you're, you're a little storm chaser. I you're a storm you're a storm chaser. <laughs> I do a little bit of everything. You know, I got got to keep my OCD CDO. You use a <laughs> you use a lightning trigger CDO. for your cameras. No, it's all. What, spray do you use a lightning spray. trigger? No, huh? It's all spray and pray. No lightning trigger. Nope. I've had three or four different versions of them and have never got one to reliably trigger. It's either too often or not mm. enough. 
it being Which too ones late. were you using? I'm curious. Um, I'd used a Myops. I'd used a uh, uh-huh. Strike Detector, which was one of the more you know DIY style. Uh, right. It was a resale unit, but um, I right. used a Pluto trigger that had lightning functionality. Pluto. The Myops yeah. had it, and I never got it to work right. And I hmm. just figured out that you know during the day mm-hmm. I shoot with a you know like a six or nine stop ND filter, fifteen mm-hmm. second triggers. Mm-hmm. Let the thing rip. Yeah. Images are free. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're, you're shooting NDs the, the, like that, you just keep the, you just keep the, the, the shutter The four good sure. lightning shots that I got, I just took videos, and I just paused the video, and I <laughs> cut the picture. And that's, a, that's it. That's, that's it. That's it. That's cheating. That's not cheating. <laughs> I, 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 am, I am not a storm chaser. I don't pretend to be. I thought it would be, make some good. I made some. I got four cool pictures. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so. Oh. <laughs> And like I've downloaded an app for my phone that you know, if I have it in a on a tripod holder, um, I put it up and it does have a decent strike detector. The quality of the image isn't all that great, but it does get bolts. Um, when, what, I'm curious. When was the last time you used my apps? It's been a while. Uh, for storms, it's been two years. Yeah, because um, they've upgraded their their triggers um, and the firmware and their latest trigger. It's supposed to be really, really good. I haven't used mine for lightning yet, but everything I've been reading on it with the the new firmware updates it's supposed to be pretty good. So yeah. I, I, if oh. I when I when I do get a chance to do it, I'll I'll let you know. See see if, how well it works. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so, Mark Ellis so, and I so, both so. have them because we use them as uh, phone tethers to be able to trigger mm-hmm. our cameras mm-hmm. without having to. Oh yeah, the they work great as slaves. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so he, here's the here's the lazy man's version of how to do this. And let's see. And, Should probably pay attention. Oh my to god, what are you doing? Wow. <clears throat> it's like a bad acid trip, man. What are you doing? I'm telling you. <laughs> Holy cow. There, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's better. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So that, that that's one shot. That's another shot. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's another shot. <clears throat> and that's me just oh, yeah. taking a couple yeah, minute videos say, what, what, and what, what you, scrubbing what, it. What the hell orientation are you? Are, are you laying in a hammock? What are you doing? No, you don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> you don't, you don't wanna know. I'm looking I at the house over there in the car, and I'm like, what in the hell is he? He's <laughs> his head. This was, this was like... <laughs> This was like cornered in like the side of a window frame. <laughs> so, so, uh, gotcha. you know, here's one of my that's, shots. There you go. That's nice. That's, that's a storm that's chase awesome. out by Luke Air Force Base. Yep. Nice. Yeah. See, well, well, you know what? You got to understand that's, that's, those are real lightning storms. We don't <laughs> get those in New York. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen a lightning storm like that in New York in a long time. Last time I saw a lightning storm like that while I was living in Savannah. Yeah. That was 2018. Let's see if I have... That's... But that's really cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Last storm I saw like that, we were coming out of Nebraska. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. I'll have to chat offline sometime, you know. Let me know what you, you know. What type of gear you use man, and that's, all that's that stuff. You know, hell, no. man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, this, I mean, this is... Well, this the other thing, too, is that the lightning, yeah, well, that that lightning there, it's not like a quick is flash. three miles out. Yeah. Yeah. That Those bolts are, they're running for several seconds. I mean, that's yeah. that's some serious lightning, well, you know. And I call these ray trace because the, yeah. the main bolt will actually light three or four times. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah, that's that. Those are fun to shoot. Oh, that one's pretty. I like I like it when they go across the sky like that. So this is a yeah, yeah. Time nice lapse video. of the yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we don't yeah. get we don't get that's storms beautiful. like that. Yeah, <clears throat> well, that's pretty. Hard. I see that's I see stuff, stuff like that out over the lake every now and then, but yeah, sure. that's pretty impressive. Yeah, you, you don't get that in yeah. suburbia, New York. <laughs> you know, you don't get that. <laughs> Even though I gotta say, there have been some amazing photographers that have, uh, that have captured lightning striking the Empire State Building, you know, oh, yeah. and uh, the the Twin Towers, you know, when they were up. Um, I've seen some crazy cool lightning shots of building strikes, amazingly yeah. beautiful. Yeah. 
<clears throat> the Sears Tower yeah, in Chicago. You know, it was hits. just happened. I'm not I'm just not waking up for it, you know. Well, and my thing is like I had a couple of buddies that were really into it and I kinda got into it because, you know, burning sucked and I I love storms, you know. I I was the guy with my dad for standing out there in our shorts in the middle of a storm watching the sky because we were both trained mm-hmm. storm spotters um, mm-hmm. for tornadoes mm-hmm. and stuff in the Midwest. So yep. <clears throat> I just naturally love it. So I love chasing them here because the cool thing here that we don't get in the Midwest was I can see the storm coming for five to ten miles out, and I can photograph it tracking right to me if I get in the right spot. So I can nice. shoot like a mofo. I just have to keep watching my radar because every once in a while it's like, yep. oh, crap, grab the gear, throw it in the car, yep. book it, because yeah, as book soon it. as you get in the car, <laughs> whoosh, and Oof. down comes two yep. inches of rain in less than 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to outrun it, there's hail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and there's a couple yep. of times, I mean, I've been pelted by hail standing out underneath, uh, you know, uh, oh, electrical yeah. lines, here in the electrical lines, taking hits a mile or two down the road. You can hear yeah. the <laughs> Go through the line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's time to go. Nice. Yeah. On second thought, I'm good. <laughs> it's not <laughs> I'm bad. Of this. I'll be fine. I'm yeah. good. That I mean, we'd go. We. I remember going through Nebraska one year. You know, and uh, there, there was a, um, a hailstorm that, that came through there, and uh, we, we had to run. We had to make it. You know, to a bridge, yeah. because yeah. I mean, you're talking hail that big. Oh yeah. You know, I mean that 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 stuff right there that'll kill you. I mean, it'll just kill you, you know. And it was everything we could do to get under an underpass, and it was no, just destroying wow. everything. There's a guy here um, <clears throat> that had photographed one of our, um, they call it haboob, it's a dust storm. Um, <clears throat> but it was, you know, like five miles tall and almost 100 miles wide. Came up from Tucson, wow. completely encompassed the valley, and ended up almost a flagstaff by the time it stopped. And... It was so thick, but the because of the storm collapsing, it was just a dust storm. So there was like no rain to clear the dust, and yep. he got this great shot. It's been used on the Weather Channel. Our oh, news sure. station pays him royalties to use it for their yearly monsoon update um, and safety videos. Is that the that one? Do. Is that the one with the big wall? Yeah, a huge wall. Du- yeah, I've seen that brown. one. Yeah, I've seen that one. It is impressive. So it put him yep. on the map, and now he storm <laughs> yeah. chases all over the country um, he was just wow. out in texas last week and caught a couple of good storms of the tornadoes and stuff that hit out there um, wow. yep yep imaging you know, is an, is an amazing craft man it, it really is you can do everything from you know nebula to little tiny flowers and bees yep everything yeah. in between you can do, yeah. <laughs> you can do everything in between between macro and astro everything. yeah you can yep. i look at it this way everything. i can photograph birds if there's clouds if there's enough clouds mm-hmm. and it's going to rain i can get storms and if there's no clouds i can shoot nebula <laughs> there you go it's a win-win the only problem i have with birds is that you know you spend twelve thousand dollars on a 600 millimeter prime you know f4 and you know it, and you you expect to get right in there on that bird and it's like the bird is this big <laughs> <laughs> you know, even with a 600 millimeter, you know, it's like, what in the world? So, yeah, birders, you, that's a whole different, that's a whole different kettle. I mean, you know, people that shoot birds. Well, I mean, that's a raptor, man. Freaking eagles, of course. I mean, those are huge. That, I'm talking finches. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you're talking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott's talking like, <clears throat> like freaking hummingbirds. Little tiny birds. <laughs> I've got those yeah, like goldfinches and things, you know. Yeah. Nut, nut, nut hatches and you know little little yeah. songbirds, you know. Right. Even robins and and you know blue jays and things like that. You you got to be pretty close. Even with a six hundred millimeter, you got to be pretty close. Yeah. And they don't like you being close, so it's a challenge. <laughs> yeah. It is yeah, a exactly. challenging one. A kingfisher. Yeah. Both yeah. Kingfisher. King beautiful. Oh, that's a good shot. Yeah. Go back on that one. Go back one. That one. Right. No. Yeah. Right there. That's yeah. That's a good shot. That's yeah, a really was, good shot. Is that, a, yeah, like is that, is that a fisher or a jay? Yep. That's a belted king. No, that's fisher. a fisher. Yep. See the brown that's belt? That's beautiful. Right here? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a belted kingfisher. That's a beautiful picture. Yeah, I like that one. Yep. That's a good one, too. Yep. Oh, and the heron. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Herons are a little easier to shoot. They're not They're not as shy. Yeah. There's a... Uh, yeah. Uh, Imaging is is a, is an amazing craft. It really is. Doesn't matter what you do. I mean, I've shot all kinds of things. You know, 
and so, you know, so I'm lucky here. We've got a riparian preserve that yeah. is a water reclamation pond. Mm -hmm. So they're pumping it out into these to go into leaching fields, and then they pump it out for drinking water. Um, but because of that, they have a bunch of birds and stuff that just kind of populate there. So, um, yep. Hey, kind of like getting, fish in a barrel, know, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Question: Do we, are are there any European besides Prima Luce, any European actual sculpt makers? Uh, what? Oh, 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 I'm gonna mess it up. Officina Stellare. Okay. I think I, I, I'm because gonna mess up. You're talking about these tariffs. Is you talk about you know what's happening now in Asia? Things are going up in price, but you know the G7 countries, you know tariffs, you know are being are lowering are, are being lowered. Yeah, it's and stuff it's, it's like Officina Stellare. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you got to start. So maybe some people may want to start thinking about that. I know, Jason, I was talking to you. One thing that this whole trip has taught me is I should not, I, I should have, but I should not have gotten rid of my 71 millimeter or my white cat. Yeah. You learn. Yeah. <laughs> you learn. There are times that I there, wish yes. that I hadn't sold my space cat. But my ass oh, car man. is so close to it, it didn't justify yeah. me not getting rid of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because now, yeah, having travel scopes, really, it's so important. You know, I, I now I see an importance and a need for having a travel scope. I really, really do. I never thought about it until going on this trip. You know, you learn yep. a lot of things and, you know... It's like what, what were you saying once at one point, Scott? It's like cry once, buy once, cry once, you yep, know, or something like that. <laughs> yep. Cry once, you know, buy once, buy once, cry once. You know, yeah, you know, you learn. Um, so I am going to start, you know, hunting for a travel scope again, and we'll see. Jason, you've been talking a lot about the Ascar, Ascar four hundred. Versus yep. the 600, I know that has had some problems, but the 400, <laughs> everybody loves. That, that 400 has been rock solid. I had one of the first series that hit the U.S. I wasn't the first person with it, but I was close to it. Um, mm -hmm. It's been an amazing piece of hardware um, to the point yeah. that I ended up not using my Space Cat anymore, and it sat there for like two years, and I'm like, you know what? I just need to liquidate it. So I found a good buyer. Mm -hmm. um, I hated letting it go because it was number 749 of 750. Because mm -hmm. uh, they were, you know, of course, with the Space Cat and the Black Cat and those, they made special editions where the white yes. and red yep. cats were, you know, made in the thousands. Um, but, you know. But, yeah. It didn't you make learned, sense you to know, keep it stuff. if I wasn't going to use it. Yeah. And see... I didn't think about, you know, because, all right, I've got the Rasa, so I had wide field, you know, I'm getting the eight edge, you know, so I can get the reducer and I've got, so I have F7 and F10. Do I really need to go any, you know, shorter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, but yes, yes, you do. That's where DSLRs help, if, depending on what you're shooting. They do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like I went out when you were shooting Milky Way in New Mexico. I had went out with uh, Mark, and we were out actually in a Bortle II uh, about mm -hmm. two hours outside of town um, mm -hmm. to the west and uh, almost to California state line um, near Quartzite, Arizona, and got some decent... Uh, photos that I can show a video later mm -hmm. if we care to, but, um, you know, it was a portal too. It was amazing how much we could see. And it was one of those things that's all clouded over. And like, it's a crap shoot. Let's go. It says it's going to clear. Let's yeah. hope it does. And it yeah. did. Um, just as we yeah. got there, got everything set up, it cleared. Um, and we had a couple of hindrances, but it did give us a good clean night. You know, we, there were, if you, if we show the video, you'll see some high cloud, kind of passing through and ghosting mm -hmm. but it didn't inhibit what we were doing and because yeah. i didn't care to stack all of these and go through all the extra work i just turned it into a video montage and said yeah it's good enough yeah <laughs> yeah 
and see, same, you know, when I was, you know, over in New Mexico, there were days, you know, you see, you know, it started to get, you know, pretty cloudy and everything. But as night was approaching, the clouds would start to thin out, get a little wispy and everything. And though, and those clouds, those thinner clouds actually made some nice shots added can, in yep. to the Milky Way. So it was kind of yeah. nice. Um, but every night turned out to be a great night. So that's one of the reasons why I, you know, really, you know, I'm thankful for the opportunity that I had. But yeah, if I would have had my white cat or even my GT seventy one, my four hundred mil, right? You know, it would have made things a lot easier on cert to do certain things. So you live and you learn. So definitely, I'll be back in the market and getting a um, at least a travel map, Next a travel time. scope. Yeah, 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 you learn. Next time, you just learn it all. So it's all good. Exactly. Um, that's what hobby's about. That's all it is, you know. Hey, you know. I, I, I'm blessed. I have a good job. They give me good money, you know, so I'll spend it. You know, they're going to give me more of it. <laughs> you know? yeah, exactly. They're going to keep telling Tyler, you can't take it with you. You can't take it with you, <laughs> you know, and yeah. money, you know, they, if they're going to keep giving it to me, then I'm going to keep spending it. <laughs> there you go. That's what you do it. So, so yeah. Um, if anybody had, you know, like you guys were talking also about this, um, the epoxy. Um, I saw from um, Mark, he was recommending, I guess it's Hilti yep, epoxy. Yep. You know, some of this stuff, it, it looks kind of weird as far as how it all works. And, and, you know, and for what I'm trying to do, I, I, you know, it's important that, you know, everything stays secure. But some of this stuff, I'm looking at, you know, Amazon, and uh, it's like, how does this stuff work? Or is it, or, or if I, am I overbuying? Am I well, doing what my so overkill? most epoxies are a two part binder. It's yep. a chemical reaction that happens and once the two chemicals touch you have a depending on what the chemical makeup is, you have a set amount of time before it'll start to mm -hmm. cure. So mm -hmm. you have time to mix it, it will kinda of change color sometimes or change consistency to let you know that mm -hmm. you're at the right mix. Um, mm -hmm. they usually come in two tubes. And as yeah, you yeah. so the don't do they don't they mix on them? Don't they do it? But they mix some do. on they their own themselves. Don't they? They'll no. you, okay. secrete it's it an out. Injector thing. Yeah, it, you uh, push it out through a plunger and then onto a surface, and you usually have to whip it with like a popsicle stick or whatever. Okay. Um, but you know, most of them are like a thirty-minute working time. Some of them you can get down to less than five minutes. Um, okay. So it just depends on what your application is, but they have specific different chemical compounds depending on the substrates that you're bonding. Mm -hmm. So like plastics so, have one set, you know, metals have another, concrete and ceramics have another. Okay. For me, for a guy, you know, who wants to keep it simple, you know, is there stuff out there where you can keep it simple where, you know, it's you buy the gun you, sh you know, you, you make your hole, you blow it out, you fill it, you know, with the epoxy, it mixes itself up, and then you tap in your stuff, and no. <laughs> no so what I'm thinking gonna is, it is that's a two part. Bad. You're going to buy it as a two-part, you're going to coat the tip, you're going to pound the tip in, and it will do what it needs to. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, you know, I'll have to mix it, and then I'll have to coat the actual anchor itself. Yep. You know, good. You know, and then just tap it on in there. It's not yep. something you actually fill into the hole. No, and then you, you tap can it in. try to get it in the hole, but you know, you're, you're sitting there with a stick trying to poke at it and get it to go. You're better right. off kind of putting it on the tip, set the tip in, and drive the bolt in. Okay. Um, and then yeah. once you do the expansion part of the bolt, um, it, it'll bond all of that and kind of lock it all in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause you know, you see some of this, I've seen some of these websites and seen some of these photos where a guy actually, he has the actual gun, like he's doing rebar and he's forcing it in there. He injects it and then he's tapping in the rebar or something. That's usually has, a pressure you know, mastic. That, yeah. That's usually a vesicle elastic that'll take in. It's got an expansion. Um, yeah. It looks like it expands out. Yeah. There's different applications, but that's not going to be what you're going to want. You're going to need a two-part gotcha. epoxy 
to deal specifically with metal and concrete. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and they, I'm trying to find have, that at, at the 80s or a Lowe's or something like that. They do. They do have, um, you know, a, a, applicators that have a uh, a long tip that has a mixing mm -hmm. chamber in the tip, um, mm -hmm. and those are okay for single use purposes because. Mm -hmm. You know, the minute that you get that stuff mixed in there, you're, you're going to want to use it fast. So, you know, yeah. if, if you get, if you buy just enough to do four holes, then mm -hmm. you're fine. You know, you just mix it up, right. you prep it, you, you, you know, squirt that stuff down in there, you know, coat the bolt, like he said, pound it in mm -hmm. and go for as much squeeze out as you can get. Yeah. Sure. You know, squeeze out is always good, man. Um, okay. So, buddy Dennis logged on. I'm, there's, there's, yeah, it's like, it's like Jason was saying, there's all different kinds of applications. One, your best, probably what I would do is see if you, see if there's a, uh, um, a specialty store in your area that deals in construction, um, adhesives, you know, uh, that, that okay. will, that has a, a dedicated concrete adhesive, epoxy adhesive, and they yeah. can probably hook you up. The people at Lowe's, at Hope Depot and stuff yeah. like that. They, they, they don't know well, what they're talking about. But they, yeah, a lot they, of them, they, don't they just don't. They don't know. Uh, Go to a try to see you find a specialty store. Okay. Yeah. Don't use. You don't want to screw around with this, man. You're putting te you're putting thousands and thousands of dollars up on that pier. You know you want to be right. Exactly. Exactly. You know? That's <laughs> what I I'm learning. You know to say, hey, <laughs> all right, I did this. You know, I got this. You know. Yeah, all right. It probably would have been better if, you know, I would have probably did the J-bolts, you know, said, hey, let's just, do, while we're doing it, just get it all in there and just be done. But it is what it is. So, uh, but if you don't I'm gonna make it work. and have that wood template, <laughs> yep. don't do the J-bolts. <laughs> you got to yep. make sure it's not going to drift. And because once they're in there That's and right. it cures, you're done. Yep. You're done. Yep. You're done. So, and that's the thing. So, you know, I'm going to use these anchors. The fo the longest I could find right now are five inch. For five inch anchors. Don't so look at I'm Menards gonna... and Lowe's and Home Depot. You need to find yeah. a bolt, nut and bolt supply house. Like here we yeah. have a, yeah. a chain called Copper State. Um, okay. But, I mean, most states have a dedicated nut and bolt. They're not going to be cheap, but... Mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be putting tens of thousands of dollars of equipment on this. Yep. Don't yep. go cheap. <laughs> Don't go cheap. Don't go cheap. Nope. Cheap went out the window Spend when you decided not to use J-bolts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Frank, thanks, thanks, Frank. Um, Fastenal. There is a Fastenal store. Yeah, Fastenal. Here, that's in, good town, Fastenal here in town. That, that That's here in town. And actually, where I work at, we have a guy who comes <laughs> in um, from Fastenal every day. And I have a, I have a pretty good relationship with him, so I'll talk to him. And there's a fast and all store right here in Belvedere. So yep. yeah, I, I, I will, yeah, I once talking about the J bolts. Right I use J bolts on mine too as well. So yeah, but no, he's right. If you don't have that template, you know, and set those bolts and, and have that that template sitting right over those bolts, yep. yeah, mm -hmm. don't even screw with those J bolts. You gotta have nope. that template. Yep. Yeah. For, for people that are going to do it, um, the best way that I've seen done is you take and make a template on a larger than your base um, mm -hmm. piece of plywood, and you yep. bolt either side of the plywood so that the J-bolts stay rigid. Mm -hmm. And then it, a lot of people will put a block or a piece of wood or something to create a space, and you just wiggle the bolts mm -hmm. until it sets on that spacer, and you just let it cure. Yep. And then after yep. it's cured for whatever the the recommendation is for that particular concrete, then you undo the bolt or the nuts, pull the nuts off, pull the spacer off, um, and then keep wetting it. Let it cure for usually it's about two to three weeks, uh, wetting it mm -hmm. initially daily and then every other day and then every three days um, for about three to four weeks. Um, yeah, 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 the, the other thing. More. That's yeah. the other thing you can do is uh, go and get go and get yourself a quart of a really good concrete sealer, yeah. you know, and just just paint that thing, paint it three four times, just coat it, coat it, coat it, coat it. That will keep. Mm -hmm. the, and you want to do it when the concrete is green, 
you know, and that will keep the that will keep the integrity of the surface of the concrete really well, and it'll be good for years if you use a good sealer. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yep. And when you mean by when you're saying green, it's when you know you're at this still point, wet. like I'm at right now, where it's kind of yep. still wet, and it's not totally green. Is the first couple of days, first week. Right. Yeah, it's right. it's not while it's still like you can write your name in it wet, but yep. before mm -hmm. it's in its initial set. So you don't want it yeah. to be okay. to its first round of hardening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like, for example, with this, since I've got the form in there, maybe, you know, today's Wednesday, maybe Friday, I was told. Friday or Saturday morning would be a good time to take the form off. Mm -hmm. yeah, then maybe that's the time when now. I can. It's probably set. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you just finished yeah, it's before set you up went now. In. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. They just finished I, I'm gonna, right yeah. before we came in. Right. So, oh, yeah, did they? Finished, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just finished tonight. Finished oh, by started. tomorrow, yeah, you, you should be tonight. able to take the forms off. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I'll, I, wait then I'll go and I'll get, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I'll go and I'll buy some sealant, you know, paint the sealant on there. Because I guess it's, it's, it's anything. It's like either you, you just Thompson. use a brush and you paint it. Thompson's makes it. Oh, Thompson. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Just don't pour and it on. Go Actually, just brush it on. Brush it on. Use a little... Uh, you can use a high nap roller and roll it on, mm -hmm. but don't pour mm -hmm. it because you want it to be evenly coated. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. And then knock that out, and then um, I figure about a week, then I think it may be a good time. Maybe this time next week is probably when it will probably be cured enough for me to go ahead and do the J-bolt. Yeah. Not the J-bolts, but the actual anchor bolts will probably be <coughs> <in> two weeks. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. We'll see. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Jason. Oh, you, you, you want it to cure. Yeah, you want to make sure it's yeah. cured. So I wouldn't do bolts or anything for at least two weeks. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So the adventure continues. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> if I, I've already, you know, process. we're already past. No, we've already. I've, you know, right now I'm already past new moon. Um, I don't even have. You know, I'm waiting for the edge to come, so I'm not even doing any narrow band yet. So. I'm not going to be doing yep. any imaging probably for a while anyway. So two weeks, go. I can wait. <laughs> I can definitely wait. And then, you know, because you're right. This is thousands of dollars worth of equipment coming on this thing. I'm not going to risk it. <laughs> well, like we had a freak. It, I can't even call it a storm, but we had an outflow boundary that collapsed coming through those fires. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we had 50 mile hour winds come out of nowhere. Yep. I'm like... And I can really smell the fires all of a sudden, and then whoosh, <laughs> stuff blowing across my yard, people's pool toys from three or four doors down, or in my backyard, stuff's tumbling over, my uh, tripod oh, fell over. Luckily, Another the small stuff's not on it. And I'm like, whoa. It's a like twister. <laughs> yep. Got everything bolted down. 20 minutes later, it's all gone. Yeah, no, Hardly yeah. a drop of rain. NEM, NEM, it's a twister, it's a twister. <laughs> There's a sale at pennies. It counts as any more. Oh, man. No, that, that, that was an airplane pun. No, no. Mm. <laughs> well, before we close well, this out, the only if you guys I... don't care, I can show my one-minute sure. time lapse. Yeah. And then we'll go to start in closing remarks. Starlink. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving this though. Yeah. So this was 900 images over about a four hour, three hour period. Yeah, I was going to ask. Of course, what's the time we're, on the, on? we're on the flight line to Sky Harbor as well for the uh, Western flights. Each each exposure was how long? Uh, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Is this 
DSLR? Or was this a... Yeah. It's DSLR, DSLR, and then I slowed the footage down 50% because it went by so quick you couldn't see. But what you didn't really probably catch is there was two... Um, there was two meteors that shot through. Mm. Oh. I saw I saw a couple of things fly through. I wasn't sure if they were airplanes or what they were, but satellites. So. There was a bunch of... Um, planes and satellites, and then there was uh, two little meteors that did come through. <coughs> nice. Hey, Scott, I just Plus noticed it. you found it, you got the rainbow. Mm-hmm. It's only been there for two hours. <laughs> I just noticed. <laughs> That's why he's yeah, I'm just now yeah. noticing. There it is. Yep. <laughs> now we can't see it because he's got the light in the way. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> and him. Yeah. Da -da. Oh wow. <laughs> there it there is. Go. Finally finished. Yep. The only thing got the custom. Got the only the thing custom I need now bar. is the. Huh? Yeah, it's the. Got the custom wheelie bar set up. Yeah. Yeah, that's the jam. Yep. That's the wheelie bar. The only thing now is having to haul the thing back up the stairs and set it up where you can actually use it outside. <laughs> well, actually, I'm not. I'm not in the basement. I, that, oh, okay. the, the, you see behind, over there, that that's a that door yeah. goes out into my garage. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. That's so. not that bad. <clears throat> yeah. What what isn't what isn't? But the door jam is only 26 inches, so the uh, <laughs> wheelie bar is still there. Yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna have to take it apart to get it outside. I mean, yeah. there, there's no way. Yeah. I can nah, just, just make the door bigger. Yeah, you can like that. Door. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Make the door bigger. It's all good. <laughs> Put French doors down there. Yeah. You won't love it. Oh yeah, but I mean that that mount is just it, it's it's almost freakishly small. You know. Compared it's, to it, that it, C14, it, heck yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's almost freakishly small. I I could not believe it. when I when I took it out of the box. It, it came in here. This is the bag it came in. Yep. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's how that's, that's how big this sucker is. And I, I picked. I'm like I picked it up. I'm like this thing's less than twenty pounds. And sure enough, it's less than twenty. It's nineteen. It's eighteen oh, and three quarters pounds. That that. Wow. Uh, but it'll hold one hundred and ten. Wow, it's incredible. In, you know, and you put the and you put counterweights on there. Because I've got 80, so 80 of, pounds of OTA. It'll fit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, with everything that's on there, I mean, it's hard to see. Man, but how much? How much but, weight? How much counterweight do you have on there? Each yeah, one of those is. Each, each one of those is fifteen pounds. So there's three of those. So it's okay. forty five pounds of counterweight plus that shaft, which. That shaft probably weighs at least ten pounds. It's an inch and a half shaft, yeah. stainless steel. You know, and so there's there's easily fifty five pounds of counterweight, including the shaft. Right. So. Yeah. And it, it seems it seems to be fine. What's what's a little unnerving about that though is that there's no clutch release. There's no clutch release. I I can't. I can't manually release the, you know, the, the tilt on it. I have Disengage. to use the hand controller to move it. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. But it does have a nice brake on it, you know. So, it, you know, if it's if it's leaning over and I lose power, it, it's mm -hmm. got a brake so it'll stop it right away. Okay. It, it, so it won't fall. It's, you know, the RA, it's got a really nice RA brake on it. Nice. Um, okay. But, yeah, it's, it's a... <laughs> It's it's a crazy freaking setup, man. I mean, it's just it's just a crazy setup. And I got the the Lasmandi, the, the Mal, and the the MA. I'm gonna be selling the MA. It, it's practically brand new, but I got the MAL. And holy cow, is that a is that a major upgrade from the MA? Yeah, it, it's it's it, probably at least a good fifty percent thicker in the material mm -hmm. itself. But it's just made really, really freaking well. Yeah, well, Los Mondays no joke. So, yeah, yeah, it's no joke, man. It, it's it's a serious freaking tripod. Um, yeah, hands down the best I've ever seen. Um, but 
So, you know, I got I got some learning to do on the mount and uh, the yep. hand control a little mm -hmm. bit. I was messing around with a little bit and, and doing the slew rates and and uh, you know the speed on it and how it moves and so on and so forth. Um, but so you just, yeah, just set it up, plate solve, and take a picture. I mean, come on. <laughs> 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 hey, you know, the only thing I need now is those antlers, you know? So as soon yeah. as they send you those antlers, man, just let me know. Yep, and I'll, yep. I'll, so I'll send you, I'll send you the PayPal invoice. invoice. Yeah. Yep. yep. I think it was, yep. oh, uh, and, and, I think it was a thousand thirty, I think if I remember right. Yeah, that sounds about right. So, something like yep. that. I'll have to look it up. But, um, so those went up too one thing before, tariffs. before we actually close. No, those didn't go up. <laughs> they're they're the, from the EU. They didn't go up. Yeah that um, I, I, my buddy, um, Pete Myers, uh, he has, uh, he's got a new position out at, um, oh, geez, the name of the company just went right out of my head. Big, big telescope company out in California. Me? No, 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 no. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, he said big, not out of business. <laughs> yeah, right out of my head. At any rate, he, um, he, he called me today. He said that this lady had come in um, and she, she's, uh, apparently she's, uh, she's gotten older, uh, you know, un unable to deal with some of the equipment that she's got. She walked in the door with two Takahashi telescopes and a Lunt 152. Now, uh, that, the two Takahashis are six, are 5000 and $6,000 respectively, right? Yeah. And the Lunt was 7000 for this yeah. thing. Um, I don't know if there's anybody that's interested, you know, but they are in, at, Pete told me, he sent me some pictures on them. They are absolutely pristine, brand new, nice. brand new Takahashis, man. There's a, there's a, an FSQ 107 ED and okay. there is a TOA 130 F. Oh, that, that's a beast. That thing is so heavy. Yeah. The 130, it's a, the tall it, one? The 130. That thing's a yep. beast. And, and they want, I think they want 5,500 for that. Wow. That's nothing. I know. I know. That's nothing. <laughs> I'm, wow. I'm, thinking about, I'm thinking about buying it. Uh, well, the one, yeah, well, I mean, that thing. I, I mean, I that thing. Takashi, Hold on. Man. I think I just saw Tyler's credit card go across the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, guys, yeah, have we, have we right. set our piece? Yeah, I, well, I set my piece, but I'm so I'm ready to pass out. <laughs> I, I I hope people who have watched this, you know, who will be watching it, they will learn from my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you know, who will learn, you know, a few things at least. And don't forget about our Cherry Springs unofficial star party. The unofficial, <laughs> unsanctioned, unofficial. Unsanctioned, yes. Unsupported. Yep. Way to commit, soldier. <laughs> you know, so, so, so yeah, so that looks like uh, August. September? August? August, August late August? August, early September. Okay. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now. Uh, I got a friend of mine looking at some hotel space. So. Nice. Nice. Because there's no way I'm nice. camping during the daytime. I won't do it. I refuse. <laughs> Your daughter's name is Abby. Is it Abby? Yes, Abby. Right. Abby, yes. can she hear me? She can't. Can uh, she, she hear can't me? Hear you. She, can't. The... she can't hear you. No. Yeah, okay. Tell her I'm waving at her. Hi, Abby. Hi, Scott. <laughs> Hi, Scott. Hi, Abby. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it'd be nice if you could come to the star party with us, but you guys are a long way away. <laughs> yeah, and Daddy's finally getting back to work, and I'll be busy during yeah. that entire time. I'll be in the State Fair in Iowa, and then off to North Carolina, and then Atlanta. Thank so it's like a the 40 Lord. Day run with like no time off. So I'm hey, thankful that we're coming good. in. Hey so, man, congrats! I'm glad, I'm glad things are turning around for you and your family. That, Absolutely. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, that is. Somebody, awesome. somebody's been really missing Daddy in the little two yeah. three yeah. trips I've already been taking. Aww. So yeah, a month sure. and a half. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be. Hey, hey, hey probably heard her yeah that's the way it's supposed it to be yeah yeah what yeah. did you want to tell them i wanted to tell them that your earbuds are a little too tight for my ears yes. to stretch them out to my ears yep <laughs> yeah yeah all right yeah 
Okay. All right, right so guys. Out? Mm-hmm. Okay, let and... Mr. Dan say his piece, and then I'll tell you when to go. Okay. No, well, well, I, I, first let me apologize real quick to the guys. I haven't sent out the email for all the prizes for the Suns, the Southern uh, Sky Challenge. I apologize. I promise they're going out this week. Um, so I just want to say that. So just be patient with me. I'm a little slow. <laughs> Other than that, I got nothing else to say. I'm exhausted. I'm ready for bed. I've been on Zoom and videos since 6 o'clock. So my brain is shot. So right. thank you guys for watching. And Abby... You're on. It's all you. Go for it. Keep Take us home, honey. Keep educating in clear skies. We'll see you next time on National World TV. See you, everybody. See you next week. See you Friday.